right, we're live in the workshop. Isn't it beautiful? I am, uh, looks like three minutes late today, but we'll get started in just a minute. On this live today, we're making our crate that came with your craft kit of the month. Came with a crate and all the cool little pumpkins to sit in it with a sign to hang on the front. Tonight, we're doing the pumpkins and the sign. So right now, we're gonna put the crate together. So jump on, say hi, I know it's the middle of the day, but everybody's got kind of different weird schedules now. Um, so hopefully you're able to stop in and say hello. So we can see what we're doing. Looks pretty good. I'll get my laptop out of the way here. Alright. I got my coffee. I don't know what y'all are drinking right now, but I still haven't finished it from this morning. Yes, it's 1230. I'm still on my coffee. I am sure it has happened to some of y'all. We are busy. Which is a good thing. We are. Right, I appreciate it. Y'all really showed out at Paulding Meadows. Um, this past weekend had a lot of sales, met a lot of y'all. That was great. Um, so that means we're busy this week. We are cranking out some craft kits. Um, painted stuff. We sold a lot of painted things, so like painted sports things and um, like the state of Georgia with Go Dogs. Sold all the ones, the painted ones that we had taken with us. So we are cranking out some more of those this week to get ready for Rose Lawn this weekend. For those of y'all that are local, it's in Cartersville um, on the Rose Lawn um, lawn. <laughs> so um, it's just right outside of little downtown Cartersville. So if you know the area, come see us at Rose Lawn this weekend, Saturday and Sunday. I don't remember the hours off the top of my head. I think they're like 10 to 5-ish, maybe only to 4 on Sunday. Um, I'll post it um, so y'all can see. But um, the other thing that was popular this past um, weekend was our actual craft kit of the month. Because obviously not everybody purchased the craft kit of the month. So I had a few extra I had made there at the show with me, minus the paint and supplies and things, but at least all the pieces, right? The crate pieces and all the little pumpkin pieces. Um, and I sold quite a few of those. So um, I think it's a good sign that y'all love these cool little decor things because I would like to do more of them um, for different holidays and seasons and things. So I am glad y'all are here or if you're watching later, say hello. We're gonna put together our crate. This is the least exciting part because there's no paint. Um, you can choose to paint it or stain it later. But go ahead and get out your pieces. This is all we're working with right now. Base of the crate. Should have six slats. So get your six slats. And then the two ends of the crate. Right, so that's all we need right now. Grab those things out of your craft kit of the month. Um, as usual, if anything shows up damaged or any problems, Please, please let me know. I can't fix it if you don't tell me. Um, but I absolutely want y'all to enjoy this Craft of the Month experience as much as I do. So let me know. Also, I don't know if y'all saw the post I made yesterday. Somebody at Pauly Meadows who was in this group, she told me she was in our DIY Divas group, said, it was kind of funny, she leaned over and whispered it to me like, I'm not trying to offend anybody, but what you do is like DIY for dummies. And it, I've been thinking about it ever since. Totally is. Totally is. I love that. Um, 
And I don't think it's insulting at all. You can't be great at everything, right? Like, I never considered myself a super crafty person. Um, I got into this first because I liked the design aspect on the computer and the machines, like being able to design and get these machines to do exactly what I wanted to do. And um, then the, the crafty part kind of fell into place, right? Like it just kind of happened. Um, so I'm totally designing for my former less crafty, crafty self, right? So I love it. So if that was you or that was your friend, because she was there with a friend, um, I just don't remember names. But um, you got to tell me who you are, so I can give you some credit on our DIY for dummies. Um, not insulting to any of us, right? Okay, so, crate, let's do it. All right, so you're going to start with, first off, take a look at the bottom piece. One side's gonna have a little bit of burn marks around the edges, that's what's on the underside when I cut it on my laser. So you'll wanna make that the bottom of your crate, I suppose, I mean, unless you wanna put that inside. So I'm gonna make that my bottom, so the pretty side, without any of the burn marks, is the inside of my crate. So if I happen to look in my crate, it will look nice. Same thing with your two inch pieces. One side should look slightly better than the other. Like this one you can see, just a tiny little bit of marks. So those I'm gonna put inside the crate and put my pretty slides outside. These are a tight fit, but I didn't adjust the design because I wanted them to be a tight fit. You don't actually have to put any glue on these if you don't want to because I'm pretty confident in this fit, but you can if you want. I'll do it just to show you how I would do it. Um, but I don't think you necessarily have to add the um, glue on this first part. So take one of your little sponges out. This piece is going to go in here so it's really just the sides of it that you're just going to dab on the tiniest little bit of glue right there. Right on either side. Okay, so it's going to be a pretty tight fit. What I suggest you do is set it in like this. and then you're gonna kind of fold it into place. And you're gonna have to kind of wiggle a little bit to get it in there. And then try to twist it so it's as straight as possible, right? So it lines up there. But it should be pretty tight to begin with. That's what I was saying about the glue. I don't know that it's even super necessary, but it can't hurt to have a little extra glue. There we go. And then just take a look at it from this direction as well. You wanna make sure it looks like a pretty good 90 degree angle. Throw a little math teacher in there for you. All right, same thing with the other end. I mean, put any on the, but you can put it on the inside there too, obviously. I forgot to do that on the other one. Alright, and then I'm going to put it in here. It's going to be pretty tight, and then I'm going to kind of fold it up into place. Do a little bit of wiggling there to get it in. make sure when you're pushing that you're pushing down here close to where you're pushing in if you push on the top it's just gonna fold over you might snap something so when you're pushing that you're pushing real close to the point that's going in do a little twisting to make sure it's straight I think we look pretty good 
And then, because it is wood glue, this is one of the benefits, I think, of wood glue, um, is it takes a little while to set, right? So we're gonna put these slats in. Sometimes people think that's a downside because you want it to set as soon as you got it in there, but. <sighs> More coffee. Actually, with the latte I made myself at home. So yummy. All right, so grab your slats. Again, you'll notice some of them have a, a side that looks slightly less um, good. That's, that's not the right way to say it. Doesn't look as good. Uh, it's got just a couple little burn marks from the underside of the laser um, where the smoke comes back under. So flip it over so you've got all your pretty sides facing out. All right, so we're gonna do these three slats here. The first one is going to fit right there. So it's going to get glue, you know, look at all the contact points across the whole bottom here, and then just on the ends there. All right, so I'm going to, and this is obviously not the same kind of fit as the first one as far as being a tight fit like that. So we're gonna have to hold it for a minute. I'm going to dab on the glue right across the bottom there. And like I said, it takes a while to set, so I'm not too stressed. It dries just the tiniest bit before I get it put on. It'll be fine. So I'm just putting some glue at all the possible contact points. If it oozes out, you can wipe it off. All right, let's put our first slat into place. There we go. And I noticed that my end piece seems to be bending in a little bit. So I just straightened it back up so it's got a more 90 degree look. Its glue is still setting, so we're okay there. Looks like it's got pretty good contact on all the spots. If it doesn't, if it has a tiny little bit of curve to it, you're going to want to push that down and hold it for a little bit till it dries enough that it's gonna hold that together. Right, so there might be a little bit of time where you're sitting and holding. This piece has good contact the whole way, so I don't think I really need to sit and hold any parts here. But all the heat that's in the laser and all these pieces are so skinny, some of them do have a little bit of a curve to them. But we can go ahead and put in the second one, and then if you do need to hold this down, you can come back and just keep touching it so it keeps reconnecting and eventually it's gonna stay there where you want it to be, right? So we're gonna put these in. They have obviously less contact points. All right. So I'm gonna put it just on the ends there, top and bottom too. There we go. Make sure you're doing it so that the pretty side is facing out, the pretty side of the wood. And then you're gonna set it down in there. This one is not as tight of a fit. I was worried about making these too tight and the little slap snapping as you were trying to like push it and get it in there. So that's why these I did make not quite as tight as the ones on the end. But it's just gonna set there, and as long as it's you know made good contact, the glue's gonna dry where it needs to dry. Come back and press this one down if you need to. Oops. 
It doesn't always want to stay because of the little pieces sticking out over there. So if yours is not wanting to stay flat, just grab something to set in front of it so it doesn't roll back like mine just did. <laughs> right, so if you just got any sort of thing you can set. Here, I've got a small little can of stain. There we go. That'll keep mine so that it's not um, rolling back on me. All right, go ahead and work on the third one. I'm just gonna double check something here, make sure we don't have any member requests for our group that I have missed. Has anyone tried to join the group? Yeah, I got that one approved, okay. Good. All right. So, third one. Here we go. This one, notice, does not have any contact points on the top, so don't put anything on the top of that one. Just on the bottom, right there. There we go. I don't know if y'all have had lunch or not already. I haven't. I got a Hello Fresh meal that we hadn't made for dinner, and I didn't want to go bad, so I cooked it this morning. So I'm gonna have a, a Hello Fre Fresh um, turkey stir fry tacos for lunch today that I cooked this morning. Brought to the workshop with me. All right. Just keep touching, make sure it's connecting in the right points, and that the glue is going to dry connected. I am pretty happy with that. All right, you're gonna wanna wait a few minutes till this is set a little bit better. Then you wanna flip over and do it on the other side with your last three slots. Again, making sure you pick the pretty sides to go out, right? Because one of the sides is just gonna be a little bit less attractive, have a couple of little burn marks from the honeycomb in my laser, not an actual honeycomb, that's what the type of bed I use in my laser is called. It's called a honeycomb. Um, but so I'm gonna put those three the exact same way on the other side, but I figure we don't need to be live for that, right? We've got the idea here. But you want to wait a few minutes till this is set a little bit more. Hello again. Whoop, get a little twisty here. Once it's set a little more, then you can flip it over um, and you can do the same thing on the other side. In my pictures for the craft kit of the month, I left this natural. I didn't stain it at all. You can stain it if you want to. You can paint it. You can spray paint it. Um, you could just spray it with a clear coat if you like the natural color, but you want it to be a little glossy, you give gloss clear coat. I thought that would be really nice. I'm thinking about doing that with mine because I do like the natural color. Um, but there are, you know, some stains. This is golden pecan, so it's going to pretty much look just like it does. It's not going to change a lot. Um, I've got darker colors I use. I've got stains and stuff all over here. Um, oh, well, that's a classic oak, which is going to look pretty similar, but there are some definitely darker um, stains if you want to or some with red that sort of thing um, this crate though I'm hoping is going to be used for quite a few more inserts so not just our pumpkins um, tonight I will show you new holiday inserts for this so that now that you have the crate you can get different inserts so make sure if you're thinking about staining or painting the crate think neutral um, in case you want to change it out with other stuff, right? So you probably don't want to paint it um, a fall red because then that's not going to work at Christmas or when you want to use it for Valentine's Day, it won't be the right red or if you want to use it for a spring or a summer one. So if you decide to do it, make sure you go with something neutral, a simple light wood, dark wood. You could spray paint it white or a cream. Um, you could even do like a spray paint, like a bronze or... Um, a hammered copper or something like that if you wanted to paint it um, or black um, 
just think neutral because the goal is that you'll get to reuse this with some new inserts that are really cute. I'm going to show them off to you tonight because I'm still finishing them up. I was painting some at home last night. I haven't glued them um, together yet, but I'm like, I can't contain myself with the cuteness. So let me just, let me just show you a little something of what I was working on last night. This is one of my favorite little additions. It's going to be in the Thanksgiving set. Like I said, I haven't glued things together yet. Y'all are getting a serious behind the scenes look. <laughs> okay, this is going to be in the Thanksgiving one. And you're going to get this adorable... Oh, I know it looks backwards, right? But... Isn't that so cute? Little sign that you're gonna be able to set down in your crate. Little turkey gobble gobble with this little ring here. So you'll get all the pieces, just like you got all the pieces of the pumpkins for this. You'll get all the pieces you need to make this yourself. Um, each set's gonna come with three pieces. So this is like one of three pieces for the Thanksgiving set. I've got a Halloween set, I've got a Christmas set. Probably have two Christmas sets. One's a little more traditional with like ornament shapes. Um, one's a little cutesier with like a Santa and a reindeer and all of that. So um, it's adorable. I'm super excited about this. Also, I just think it's cool that you get the crate once and you don't have to keep rebuying that obviously, right? You just change out your little inserts. It's kind of like tear tray thing. But for those of us who don't have tear trays or are a little overwhelmed with like having to decorate two or three levels of a tray, one small crate will start there, right? But for those of y'all with the big tier trays, you can put the crate on the bottom and then you can add to the other trays. So, um, but I like it. It's like a tier tray light. Um, and you'll get to switch them out for the different seasons, set it on your kitchen counter, middle of your table. If you have like, um, in my kitchen I have a, well, most people would have a buffet sort of thing next to their eating table. Mine's um, a vintage record record player from my grandfather, which does still play, super awesome. We love dancing in the kitchen. Um, but it's got a flat top, right? Because it's one of those that you have to like, open it to get down to the record player and the front speakers. It's really cool. Um, but so when it's folded flat, it's a flat surface and it's like the perfect place for me to set decor. Um, also, depending on the size of your mantle or the height of your mantle, you could definitely put it on a mantle entryway sofa table sort of thing. This would be great for a little like console sofa table. So um, probably not telling y'all anything. You don't know, you can think of great places for this. Um, so my crate slats are pretty good. I could still pull them off if I really wanted to, but why would I do that? So they've set pretty well. I'm probably ready at this point. I'm gonna flip it over. I'm gonna put the slats on the other side exact same way we did the slats on the first side but I will spare y'all having to watch me do that again um, so that's it for this afternoon's live I will see y'all tonight at 7 30 straight from my house I'm gonna take stuff home and we're gonna do the live there tonight um, and we'll paint our pumpkins and we'll paint our fall harvest sign um, people who saw the painted pumpkins at Paldy Meadow this weekend were like how did you paint inside of there? And I had to tell them our trick, my DIY for dummies. It's two pieces. You're gonna just paint the back, glue that on. And it's gonna look way harder than it actually was, which is also super important. I want people to think that we like labored over this to make it look amazing. And we hand painted every little tiny detail, right? I want you to see it and be like, you made that? And you're like, yes, yes I did. That's my goal with this stuff. So, um, you don't have to tell them the tricks. I tell the tricks. You don't have to tell them the tricks. They don't have to know it was two pieces and you just painted the back and glued that on. They don't even know that. You can let them think that you hand painted all those little pieces. Yeah, let them think that. Let them think you got that kind of time. All right, y'all, I'm done. I know we didn't have a ton of watchers today. Uh, kind of awkward wouldn't say afternoon, but I wanted to get the crate build out of the way. Comment later if you got anything to say. Um, it would be nice to know somebody watched at some point, so I'm just not out here by myself being a goofball. Although that does happen a lot in my life. Um, 
used to it. But I will see you guys at 7.30 tonight. We're going to paint some pumpkins. Our crate will be all done. So we're going to put them in our crate and hang the sign on. And it's going to be adorable. And you're going to be so proud of yourself. So I will see you guys tonight. Bye.